Hello and welcome to the course on Dynamics of Machinery. So in this presentation, I will just introduce you with the content of this particular Dynamics of Machinery course. So this course is uh, specifically designed for B mechanical engineers. So this is the structure of uh, this particular course. So here uh, the teaching scheme is specified and uh, the credits for this particular subject. At the same time, the examination scheme is here, that is, in semester exam will be there for theory 30 marks and end semester exam is for 70 marks. And at the end of the semester, there will be oral for 25 marks and the term of marks are 25, which is a part of a continuous assessment. So the prerequisites for this particular subject is the strength of materials, engineering mechanics, engineering mathematics and the numerical methods. So definitely the dynamics of machinery this subject means it is actually related to the dynamics of it. So we have already studied in mechanics the statics and the dynamics. So static in case of statics the force and the effect uh, the cause and the effect is a force and in case of dynamics the cause is a force and the effect is a motion. So in general in case of dynamic systems the state of the system depends on the input product to it and the time. So always any system will be varying with respect to time. So in case of machines, generally we are providing the input by using a prime mover. So it is providing certain amount of energy to the machine to do the certain kind of work. So while doing the conversion of this work, so definitely there are different number of forces and uh, so in general, the, there are different types of forces which acts on a machine and uh, sometimes these forces are not expected or they are actually causing some problems in the system. In case of uh, this particular subject, now we have to understand those forces which are going to cause the loss of energy from the machines in the form of vibration. So the most important uh, force which is actually causing the problem of vibration in the machines that is nothing but the unbalanced force. So the objective of this particular course is to make the students conversant with the balancing problem of the machines. Second, to understand the fundamentals of free and force vibrations. Then, to develop competency in understanding of the vibration and noise in the industry. And to develop analytical competency in solving the vibration problems. At the same time, to understand the various techniques of measurement and control of vibration and noise. So, these are the objectives with which this particular course is designed. Now, we will see the content of the first unit. So the first unit is on single degree of freedom systems, actually it is a free vibration. So free vibration it means simply if you consider a pendulum and if I displace this pendulum by some amount on any one side left or right, so it will start oscillating about its particular fixed pivot point. So this is nothing but called as a free vibration and since there is no resistance to the motion, this will be continuous. So this is what is called as free vibration. So in this case you are going to understand the different uh, elements of vibrating system and you are going to represent this. Uh, forces or the simple harmonic motion in terms of vectors then degrees of freedom we will understand what is mean by degrees of freedom then we'll see the introduction to the physical and mathematical modeling of vibrating systems so in that case we will try to prepare some mathematical model some for some bicycle or for motorbike or of a quarter car like that then we will understand the different types of vibrations then uh, equivalent stiffness means what what is damping and uh, what is the formulation of the differential equation of motion by using the dl Lambert principle or Newton's law or the energy method? Means there are three methods. So by using these three methods, we can uh, formulate the differential equation of motion. So there is a undamped free vibration. That means when there is no damping, when there is no resistance to the motion, that is called as undamped free vibration. And damped free vibration means when there is certain resistance. Like in this case, you can see here, there is a damper is here. So if the damper is used in the system or if there is some resistance to the motion then there will be uh, called as the damped free vibrations and uh, here you can see uh, the example of uh, vibrations like it is a uh, more automobile in this automobile actually you are supplying the power by using IC engine okay in this case we are using electric motor it is a wing machine this is nothing but the planes so everywhere there is a vibration okay and we have to understand these particular systems. Now, in the second unit, actually, we will come across the single degree of freedom system force vibration. So, in this case, actually, there will be certain external excitation which will act continuously to provide the vibration to the system. 
for example in case of ic engines whenever there is a power stroke there is a sudden impact over there and because of this there will be vibrations in the system so power stroke is giving us the output definitely converting that input means the chemical energy of the petrol or diesel will be converted into mechanical energy and that mechanical energy will be used for the motion of the vehicles so here you will find out that uh, the vibrations will be up called as a force vibration these vibrations given to the automobile may be due to the engine itself or sometimes it may be the external excitation given by the road surface because whenever the vehicle is moving on a road the road surface will be giving certain excitation to the system so that is called as support motion uh, like here you can see that when the aeroplane is uh, having its landing gear so when it lands uh, the, on the surface that surface if it is irregular it is providing the excitation to the system so you have to understand these force vibrations and their different kinds of uh, force vibration and uh, what are the different ways by which this particular force vibration can be reduced so there is a force and motion transfer the major concept in this particular unit so we are expecting that the transmissibility should be minimum because if you are having a particular vehicle and if you are moving this vehicle on a road and if there are vibrations being transferred from the road surface to the person and if the person is having uh, excitation which may cause his head to touch to the floor of the vehicles definitely where it is not desirable that if a vehicle is moving on the road and you are uh, the human being which is occupied in that particular car or in the bus so it's, he will jump inside the car and it will touch to the top surface of the roof so definitely it is not expected so we are expecting that there should be minimum transmissibility so minimum amount of vibration being transferred to the person sitting inside the car so this is what is actually, actually we are going to study in this force vibration then uh, there will be a uh, two degree of freedom system because now in the previous case uh, just to simplify the system we are calling it as a single degree of freedom system or two degree of freedom system means the more is the number of degree of system more will be the complexity of the particular system and uh, in case of uh, that complexity then you have to find out the natural frequency so natural frequency for single degree of freedom system is quite easy to determine compared to the two degree of freedom system and even actually every system existing will be having infinite degrees of freedom but generally we will consider the single degree of freedom system to just simplify the system if you have to get more accurate results then you have to go for the two degree of freedom system or three degree of freedom system or more higher number of degrees of freedom of the system to get the more correct accuracy because our aim here is to calculate the natural frequency and why we are calculating natural frequency because we have to avoid resonance so resonance means the vibration will be of large amplitude like I said, the example of automobile. So, in case of automobile, there will be very heavy vibrations if it is there. When you are sitting in a bus or a car, if it is vibrating, so you will start jumping inside the car, and definitely that is not expected. So, this will happen. This will happen when the resonance is achieved. So, resonance is achieved. It means the external excitation frequency and the natural frequency of the system matches. So. To avoid that matching of the natural frequency with the external excitation frequency, we should know the current or the natural frequency of the existing system so that we can keep this natural frequency different than the resonance frequency. So that is what is the aim of this particular uh, unit. Then uh, here actually we are going to study the reason of uh, causing the vibrations in the system that is nothing but the unbalanced force and then definitely it is our prime aim that we should reduce this unbalanced force or we should remove this unbalanced force and for that there are different uh, balancing methods for applicable for different kinds of engines and uh, different kinds of uh, rotating machineries so this is what is covered in unit number four and then we'll come across the measurement and control of vibration so if you have to make the control of the vibration that means we should know the exact vibration in the system so for that we are using different instrumentations so to make the measurement of the vibration so generally vibrations are measured by using accelerometer which is nothing but a sensor and impact hammer is one of the sensor which is actually exciting the system so we are using this vibration measurement by using a vibration analyzer which is called as FFT analyzer that is fast fluid transform analyzer and uh, once you uh, understand that what is the vibration level in the system then you can put certain controls over it so we can provide the control of uh, vibration by using certain methods so this is what is being covered in unit number five and then the unit number six is related to the measurement of noise 
so definitely whenever there is a system uh, is causing the vibrations or whenever machines are giving the vibrations so vibration will be having interaction with the surrounding and that interaction if it is touching to some other component then it will cause the noise so this noise has to be measured and it has to be maintained within a controllable level or which within an acceptable level because if the human ear get damaged it cannot be repaired again it it means we should take care of this thing so that the human being which is working in the industries or near to the machine they should not be exposed to a very high level of noise so for that we have to avoid the exposure to the high levels of noise or we have to provide certain means by which the actual uh, quantity of noise which will be heard by the particular person will be within the allowable range so that is what is the different noise standards are there and all those things we are going, going to understand in this particular unit number 6 so these are some of the reference books specified here which you can use for this particular subject now we will see the basic course outcomes of this particular subject so at the end of this particular subject what you will come to know so once you study the unit number 1 you will be able to estimate the natural frequency for single degree of freedom system damped and undamped free vibration then at the end of unit number 2 you will be able to determine the response of force vibration due to harmonic excitation base excitation and excitation due to unbalanced forces at the end of unit number 3 you will be able to estimate the natural frequency and mode shapes for two degree of freedom undamped free longitudinal and torsional vibrating systems and at the end of unit number 4 you will be able to apply the balancing technique for static and dynamic balancing of multi cylinder inline engines and radial engines and at the end of unit number 5 you will be able to describe the vibrating measuring instruments for industrial and real life applications along with the suitable method for vibration control and at the last unit number 6 it gives you an ability to explain noise its measurement and noise reduction technique for industry and day to day life problems. So with this I will end this particular presentation and in the next presentation we will start with the content of the unit number 1 that is to get the knowledge about this particular course outcome number 1. So thank you, thank you very much.